This week we're going to be looking at the data that we've collected in our Google form and trying to understand what that information means. The first tool that you have in analyzing your data is the summary of responses tab. So in your Google form, we've been looking at the question tab for quite a while, but your response tab is where you will see a summary of all of the data that you've collected. Now, the great thing about the summary tab is that you don't have to do anything. Google will automatically collect and display that data for you in various graphs and charts. So I have a couple different forms here that I want to uh, show you. The first uh, form that I have is my on off task tracker. So the form looks like this, and this is designed for a teacher to fill this out two or three times a day to monitor uh, student attention. So it just goes through and says, is that student on task, off task, or absent? This will significantly improve the reliability of those observations. As teachers, you know, we look and we're aware of the students who are disruptive, but you're not necessarily aware of students who are off task, but not uh, disruptive. So this will give us some, some good data points. Now, the nice thing about this particular form is that it's going to plot that data in a bar graph by student. So I can put my mouse over any of these graphs and we'll see Ben um, is on task the majority of the time. And I can just scroll through here and see if there are any, you know, high points. So right here, this is an issue, you know, Barrett, he is either off task or absent the majority of the time. So without really doing hardly anything, I'm getting some good actionable data uh, that I can potentially use to uh, provide intervention for students who are struggling. Now I can also go in and look at the individual responses. So this would be on a given day, um, which students were on or off task. So that's uh, for kind of a record keeping form. Um, I'm going to go ahead and uh, let's take a look at a quiz. So this is a, uh, a simple quiz um, that students have taken. I've got a lot of responses in here. So the first tab, you'll notice that the response tab is a little bit different here because it's is an actual quiz, not just a survey. So we're going to have three different tabs to look at. So let's look at the summary first. So this is going to show me the distribution of grades in the class. So I can see that the average was 3.6 out of five, which is okay. Um, then I will go down and see my individual student scores so I can tell uh, who struggles kind of ranking them. Um, and then if I scroll further down, it will show each individual question and how many students got that particular question correct, which is very helpful in identifying difficult questions. I can also uh, switch to the question tab and that will again break that down by question and show me um, what in this case is the questions that I need to grade. There was a, a free response question on here. If I want to look at the individual student scores, I can see their actual quiz submission here. The summary tab is the one that's going to be of primary value uh, to you and just looking at the overall performance of your class. So that's what a, the summary looks like on um, a quiz. Uh, one more that I'll show you. So this is a um, form that I use to collect um, uh, session proposals for a conference that I run. And one of the big things that I have to do as the organizer is try to balance out the various um, topics and uh, ability levels of the proposals. So I will go in here th at, throughout the open call for speakers and take a look at um, this uh, page here, you know, which products are most popular, what uh, sessions are being submitted. So you can see that almost over half of the proposals some way touch on Google Drive. So it was probably, you know, perhaps too many. Whereas if I go down here and you look at some of these, you know, it's like, oh, wow, there's only one with Chromebooks. We need to increase that. So this gives me kind of a snapshot of um, what type of sessions are being presented. Also, I can see the skill level. So most of the sessions are beginner. I'm always struggling to get more advanced uh, sessions in there. The audience strands that are being selected when you more IT sessions. So I can look at this throughout the open call for speakers to determine um, where I might need to intervene to improve the conference.
Now, one thing uh, that you can do with all of uh, these graphs is you'll notice in the right corner here is uh, this little icon. If you click this, you're copying that graph and you can then go and paste it into a Google document or presentation. So if you had to you know, present this data to someone, uh, it makes it easy to do that. Now, when you make that copy, it's just copying the image uh, here. It's not actually a live um, graph. So as new data comes in, um, wherever you paste that image, it's not going to be updated. Now, the nice thing about the summary of responses tab, as I mentioned, is that you don't have to do anything. It does this for you automatically. The downside to it is that you can't customize this. You can't adjust your graph. You can't churn your bar graph into a pie chart or um, uh, vice versa. You get what you get. Google, based on the question type you're using, will give you their recommended graph. So the next thing we need to look at is how we can create our own graphs and charts using Google Sheets.